This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Okay, perfect. So um, I'm. I'll, let me introduce myself again. My name is Suhas, and I have uh, 12 plus years of experience in software, uh, especially in various roles in IT. So what happened was I started my career as as in a test engineer, and I did my ISQB certification after a few years. And I came to this this particular profile of performance engineering, and I was very happy to join this particular profile. So I had a, um, I had the privilege of working with uh, Microsoft directly on some of their pro uh, performance project, and these projects were infrastructure optimization, and that has to has to deal a lot regarding um, how the infrastructure works and how we can uh, improve the infrastructure with many components of Microsoft and even at the technology level, um, how we can um, how we can improve the performance of any application. Um, apparently, I also had an experience of working with Google on their uh, in-house projects and uh, to understand Google standards at many, many levels. And uh, the best thing what I learned was that every response for for any request that you are sending must have a um, 200 millisecond response time. So that was something which was stated by Google and that is a universal thing for performance engineering. And how we can do that, that of course I'll, I'll help you to understand with the JMeter experience that I have. So I have worked with JMeter for approximately more than um maybe five four to five six five years now and uh, i did a lot consulting project so uh, why jmeter because jmeter was was a tool which was which has a huge capability and um, as it is an open source it, it is completely um, you know there is no license cost for it um, when there is no license cost for it of course what happened is um, uh, you know uh, what happened is always there is always a budget there is a budget of of testing and when there is a budget of testing you need to understand what uh, what things do you have in hand and how much is the budget that you have and uh, you know that will help you to understand how much money you are burning in a, in the particular process so performance engineering being it is performance uh, testing being it is very important crucial part of the deliverables that you do but of course, there has to be, um, we, we have to make the cost very, very effective. So there are uh, other tools also available in market, um, especially like load runner, there are tools. But uh, as you must be knowing that the, uh, the load runner comes with a per seat cost of, uh, of, of the application. There are a few situations wherein you can, wherein you can uh, where you have to pay for the, the number of load that you have to put so um, and, and what happened is if you are using that much of um, you know, that much of resources that much of money into performance engineering it will directly affect the cost of the project that's why jmeter is jmeter is preferred by many many companies these days because of the cost effective thing and uh, all of the things all of the features that you can do in any other tool like web load or uh, or neo load or even uh, load runner most of the things can be most of the things can be done in a jmeter so uh, that is the reason why jmeter is quite a popular tool and uh, i personally love it because it is a Java based open source application. You can customize it. You can use any plugin. You need to understand what plugin can be used at what place. Apart, apart from that, there are if you are good with Java, you can develop your own plugins. Um, there are n number of resources available as it that is an open source and the community is working since so many years now. Um, there are so many resources which are available wherein you can, wherever you are stuck, you can see uh, the see the solutions online, and um, no, so so that is why JMeter is quite a popular tool these days. Um, there 
meter is of course there is one of one of the component called blaze meter which is an extension to j meter itself so what happen is uh, you can you can use uh, blaze meter if you are if you want to put more and more load um you know the the number of users that you want to execute for a particular test uh, if you want to increase that you can use online components like blaze meter blaze meter is a cloud based application what you can do is you can create your scripts here you can upload your scripts on blaze meter cloud and uh, you can select an environment where you want to execute this particular um you know script on on what kind of environment you want to uh, execute those on uh, what what the uh, geographic location you want to do that how many users do you want to put on that so you can do all those things using blaze meter and once that uh, once that is done your even your results are available online uh, once those are those are executed it will directly come up to you know to your uh, email account those are the facilities which are available so um, as i was saying that gmeter is um, is a hugely popular tool and it is widely used across uh, the world so let's start with the demonstration i'll again not go with the traditional what is performance engineering what is uh, non uh, functional testing because uh the participant that we have today are um, mostly from from yesterday's batch and uh, as kumar told me that you already have some uh, trainings on performance engineering so let me start with jmeter uh, directly you can go through the uh, you must have gone through what what happened yesterday okay so um let's start with jmeter again okay so uh, you must be knowing that we what the prerequisite that we need for jmeter is uh, you must have an a java the java installed on your application on your pc so yesterday i told you three ways of opening this particular application how you can use it you can open with a command prompt by uh, by a simple jmeter command Uh, you can open with the uh, PowerShell. You can open directly with the batch file here. And once, okay, okay. So with the batch file, you can directly run this particular application, and it will open the screen. Take. A little while. So the official website for um, downloading JMeter is JMeter dot um, Apache dot org. You must use this one. the current version that is going on is 5.11 there are a lot of upgrades that are actually happening on the apache side so um, the tool is always um, i'll always suggest that if you are using this tool you must use the latest version because in the latest version what will happen is you will get most of the features most of the things that is working but um, once you become an expert on this particular tool what i'll suggest is you create your own copy of of uh, your apache jmeter you know and because you will have a lot many plugins that you have installed you will have a lot many certification certificates that you are putting for the security purposes uh, you will have some modifications done in the in the memory uh, factors so i'll always suggest that you keep this folder as your personal folder once you modify those and and uh, wherever you go wherever you um, switch your uh, job or you have that particular contract you should carry your own um, apache jmeter okay so that is what i'm suggesting so this is apache jmeter 
um, it comes with a default test plan which is being uh, added now what is a test plan is test plan um, helps you to add some user defined variables um, you can add some variable name like username password you can add in the in the test plan itself because you can use those okay uh, you can add so um, you can uh, set the thread group um, you know, how you want to execute it through a test plan uh, you can you so this is the basic you know if, if you see the folder structure so this is our folder structure and uh, in the test plan you can keep all your steps that you want to do and all your applications that you want to do so so that that is why test plan is added by default here uh, apart from that, in this particular screen, there is something which is important is this this corner, which will actually give you the log. Okay, if you see that there's a log viewer button here. So the warning icon is there. And if you click on it, it will give you what warnings that are, did you face when you uh, when you started it. Like I did not set the, um, no, the heap, the Okay, I did not set a uh, few things like uh, how much how much uh, memory should I be consuming and everything. So it has given me warning that you should be um, clearing this warning. But it works uh, properly. It is not anything. Uh, so if there will be any issue or any bug, of course you will be uh, sorry. If there will be any error in your script, you will it will appear here. Uh, from there you can go inside and understand uh, where is the exact defect. Okay. So that is about test plan and um, okay. so you can use, so there are, there are uh, many things and um, I don't know if they have changed from, okay, there are, yes, there is. So these are templates. What you can do is you can go in file beneath the new um, button. There is a template button. Uh, the template menu uh, when you click on it you will see there are a lot of templates which are already there now what these templates are um, these are basically all of your uh, templates that that will help you to add many components uh, which are required for a particular kind of test say for an example I'm doing an, a test with recording or record with a think time it will have that template with the record with the uh, think time one if i'm doing a jdbc load test it will have a jdbc load test so what it does is okay in, let's see this particular example so in jdbc jdbc load test uh, you have you can add the database drivers to jmetal lib folder and uh, so we'll see this in detail when we'll actually go inside uh, the class okay when when we'll start the course completely so um, you can modify the sql queries so this is basically um, it is they are already created okay and there are resources which are available like useful links which are already available how you can do it yourself and uh, so so the, that is the best part now, the second best part of JMeter is if I'm adding any component, say for example, I'm adding a thread group, what I can do is I just need to understand JMeter and this is how I learned myself. So you, you, you have added any component like thread group and what is a thread group? I need to understand it at a very inside, very detailed level. What I can do is on, on thread group, I'll right click, I'll go to help. Okay, it's very uh, funny thing that I should I should be uh, telling in a class that how you can get the help. But this is really very um, nicely placed in JMeter. This is uh, even being an open source application. This is the best thing that they have done is you go on a component, right click and click on help. And what it does it, it directly goes to the to the section where you can read in each and every detail <coughs> i'm sorry each and every detail of the particular component what is a thread group you can understand it here 
you can also see okay it explains you everything and everything is in very simple english very crisp, crystal clear very crispy so you can just go through it and understand what exactly this tool is doing okay and um, as as a part of your continuous learning i'll try to, after the course of course i'll try to explain most of the things whatsoever you we can do and that will um, that will be an advanced course completely which will uh, make you understand that there are how to use this component how to create those tests and everything but as a part of your own understanding your own continuous learning you should be learning it more and what you can do is you can always go on the gmeter official website and then add and then understand many <coughs> components like we'll we'll just see uh, i have added an http request now what is an http request sampler is it will uh, it will have the http request which i which will be there and on the basis of and on the basis of, of the same uh, the http request you can actually handle the http request uh, from here and just one second release really so um, to understand more detail about it what i'll do is what is http request i'll right click i'll go on help and it will take me to an http request detailed um, page it will have most of the information that is available so it says that http request will have what is the next that is that is request is uh, for a web server it will help you to control and pass html files so you can pass this kind of files from here and um, there are okay and then many other details which you can understand you can um, see how it works okay so there are n number of samples uh, which which can be uh, uh, which can be used and once that is done you can we can understand that we can understand more and more about jmeter um, so there is one of the sample like uh, let's see where is it so they have changed a lot many things just a second okay like this one so we have a cookie manager now what is a cookie manager cookie manager uh, what happens is there are many applications which runs only um, you know on on the basis of cookies only so when you will have a particular test and there will be a, if if the those those tests are stuck with the cookie information and it is very important for it uh you need to add those cookies so let's see an example how we can actually add a cookie so we had that uh, what is that jpet store got it so let's see if jpet store has some cookie so i'll go in inspect element there is security yeah. and think okay it uses cookie so this is our cookie information so uh, say for example my application this application will have uh, a constraint um, a validation already in place that validation is um, and the application must not run without a particular session id right and most of the time you will face this issue when when uh, you know you will be executing your test again so what you can do is you can um, get this cookie okay you just need the name and i'll add it so name is jsa session id for this particular request and the value is of course that will be a dynamic value and uh, you need the domain 
So you will just copy this from domain here. You will add it here. And then there is a path. Okay. And you will add that path here. So this is a particular cookie that I have added uh, for. Okay. And then you can, what you can do is you can add your variable name. Now I'll I'll explain this variable name in the in the exact in the classes when we'll actually do. So what you can do is you can use this variable name wherever you need the cookie to be passed for your request. And then you if you are running with multiple iterations, how many iterations you are working with, you can use those cookies because on every iteration, every every user, every transaction that you are hitting that particular server, what it will do is it will clear on the cookie for each of the requests that you are setting or each of the user base it completely depends on what technology or how, how you have set that particular thing on the uh, web website okay so that is how you can add cookie now how to understand more about this you can right click go to help it will directly take you to cookie manager and you can read the number of things which are available here no, it is perfect. The snapshots must be old, but don't worry. <coughs> the information is quite the same because it is it will have the basic information and that is the only thing that you will need to start um, or if you are stuck with that particular uh, problem. OK, so you understood cookie. Uh, if you have any questions, can you please uh, add in comment? You can add in comment if you have any questions regarding this cookie manager or even the HTTP request or sampler or uh, whatsoever we did so far. You can write that in chat. I'll try to uh, address those as many as I as I can. OK. OK, moving ahead. Um, what I'll do is I'll just recap yesterday's session and uh, in today we have added this too okay so i added a thread group then i'll add a test script recorder now what is my test script recorder is it is a proxy controller it is a proxy controller and it has a, it, the particular port number will work as a proxy controller and then i need to set where i can where i want to save my uh, save my steps okay the number the number of steps that i'm executing for this particular um you know, the the test that i'm doing so in that case what i'll do is i'll uh, i'll select test plan thread group and uh, do i want to group it or not i can do that and then so i'm keeping it very simple i'm uh, putting those steps into um, thread group Yesterday we also saw that when I um, when I actually started with recording this particular application, this application, what it was doing was it was actually hitting uh, Firefox as it was hitting for what are the updates available. You know, so let's start and see what happens. Okay, when I click on start. It generated a self-signed Apache JMeter temporary root um, file. Okay, so this is what I was telling. So it created one unwanted step. And why is this? This is an HTTP request. HTTP request takes me to an HTTP protocol, and it is going to detect portal.firefox.com and then success.txt okay there is no other information which is available here now why it is doing so because the the firefox is uh, firefox is actually trying to hit its own server to see if there are any updates available there. So as you can see, 
that it is most updated but most of the time what it will, it will do is it will keep it will keep on searching it will keep on searching and there will be a request that will be <coughs> that will be going to the server okay to um, help yourself you can delete all the steps and um, yesterday we saw one small thing which i'll repeat here so how you can add a request filter so request filter is any request that is that your browser is rendering so let's say my browser if i hit this particular um, let's see what exactly is happening here so for understanding purpose we'll go in the network tab and then we'll just refresh this So you see there are one, two, three, three requests that I can see in my browser itself. So there is a CSS file, there is this file, and there is an icon file. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Now what happened was this are these are actually hidden requests. These are background cache requests. So you can always clear the cache and then do the recording because what it will do is it will help you to collect all the information for the particular step that you are trying to record okay so that is one another recommendation now you can see it again that uh, you there is a success.txt which is all, all again added in the script okay so how you can how we can remove that we will have seen yesterday and we'll see it again today we'll go to request filter and uh, so url pattern to exclude so there is a suggestion which you can add so add suggested exclude will add all the unwanted request that is generally suggested that you should not be hitting it And what I did was I added a small okay. I added a small um, syntax which was I'll just try I'll zoom it so that you can see what exactly is the syntax that is dot star backslash and txt okay. So what you can do is you can add this particular uh, whatsoever file. Say for example, I don't need any PNG file for my test. I don't need any icon file, ICO file, right? So I can add those into the exclude list. Or else you can. This is the this is the best pattern that they have given. You can separate it with pipe and add as many as possible okay and once that is done okay so we added dot txt and the default one let me delete the default one i'll stop the test i'll remove all the steps let me also go and clear the cache here okay now i'll go back and start recording My first step is go to website. So this is transaction controller. As I told you yesterday, what transaction controller did was it actually created the transactions so that I could understand what exactly steps are going on in my script. Okay. Perfect. Now you can see that there are so many requests It has been masked with the transaction name. You can also add up. You could have an added a prefix also. So you can see that when I hit a single request on the browser, there were a few things that happened behind. So it loaded a CSS file. It loaded a GIF file. It again loaded a GIF for cart, for cat, for separator, for fish. Okay, and there was an ICO file. So these things were um, 
so you can see it here so the same number of requests were added there so let me take to the next step what i'll do is i'll go to docs add docs for the sake of example let me keep it as prefix and i'm clicking on doc there is the bull doc there and the detail add to cart change the quantity update the cart proceed to checkout will take to so this is checkout login or else if you keep it plain what it will do is it will directly create the steps on the basis of okay you can see this the default way how it used to handle okay so you can see that we have added this as prefix and this as masking of the uh, transaction name okay so once this is done okay we are done with recording what we'll do is we'll stop the stop this transaction and we'll right click on test plan and add a listener for our debugging purpose so as i recommended yesterday i'll recommend it again you can you should add view result tree it will give you the insight of each and every step that is being executed for a particular um, test that we are conducting so overall what we have is we have these many steps and um, these many steps will be executed now so this is the start button okay you can also start with here and there is a, window, a control r which is uh, the shortcut okay so you can see So you can see that there is this is the response that you are getting from the website this is the response data this is the request that we have sent okay so this is there are there is a get method post method what i'll do is when we'll start the course i'll try to explain you how this post and get method works um and what are these components and there is a request data request response that we have done okay now one more trick that you can do it here is you can see okay you can see the response in various re response in various format so for an example i'm using html okay so i can click here and go to html and go to any of the requests that i have added it will show me the the content in an html format by default it is set as text okay when it is set as text it will show me the entire thing only on a text basis and when i click on i'll change it to html it will show me in html format So you can see that okay, this was one where we added username password. It won't be exactly the same, but of course there will be a lot of components which you can use. Okay. So do you have any doubts, any questions? Please let me know. You can add your questions in the comment section. Your team impact unnecessary voice, please. Okay. Okay. I hope I'm. Um, everyone is audible. Okay. So uh, that was that was one more thing. What we saw in the response data and what we did was we added 
a view result tree for understanding what our, uh, our script result was. Okay. So once that is done, you can add any listener. Now, what is a listener is it will when you are sending a request and it is it is getting back your response. Uh, your request handler will uh, what it will do is it will capture the data, a specific set of data on the basis of your performance counters that you have set for your for your understanding, right? So what all do we have here? We have a summary report, we have aggregate report, we have um, we have a result uh, tree, we have response time graph. So you can add any any um, listener to it as per your requirement and on the basis of it. Um, so as as an as as my own experience, what I used to do was I used to um, create no, the, the problem is, is generating reports. So there are some tools, there are some uh, plugins which are available online and these plugins can be added and uh, on the basis of same, uh, you can generate many reports which are available. Uh, but if you, if you just want raw data and you are good with Excel, what you can do is you can create uh, a CSV file and you can you can create an output file from the summary report and uh, you will get the raw data there i'm sorry so uh, once you get the raw data you can put it in excel you can use your pivot skills and uh, you can generate the report that that you want to show to your management so uh, that is the best thing that is the best practice that i followed for many years I will always suggest that you should also be doing that. <clears throat> now, if you can see in this particular listener, it is very interesting. Uh, you can um, create a file name. Let's say uh, I'll just browse and let me create my desktop. So that is a but store. I cannot open that, but what I can do is I'm just putting this and if there are success or error, I can put all the success messages or I can put all any error messages. You can click on configuration and you can set what all things do you need in your uh, result. Okay. You want to save and you, you want a label, particular label to be done that all things you can configure from here. Once okay, so let's execute this. So what I did was there were there are a few steps and these steps are um, I'm just adding this okay, went wrong. Just a second. clear the results first okay so it is running you can see that there are number of users is one and it is green this is red right now this is back to disabled stage this is again back to disabled stage. So that means your test has been done. No, I did not. Okay. Why it is not generating? Let me add another listener. View result table. Let's add view result table. Let me add 10 users now and then clear the results, run the stress. Okay.
okay summary input it is not generating data okay here you go so you have your your results in this particular thing in in the view result table i can add a file path here let me clear it again let me run it again Okay, you can see that all the response are 200 okay and uh, this is exactly how you can collect the raw data and create that raw data into a particular sheet and that that sheet can be used for your uh, training purpose i mean your uh, uh, showing to the management you can create your ppts you can create your uh, reports how how your execution went and um, you know if there were some errors you can you went into debugging for that particular error into this uh, once you you are done okay one thing i forgot to tell you in this html view when it will be a very heavy application i'll suggest that never go for html it will actually crash it has happened many times with me so why i'm telling you is it, it you can actually do it for the debugging purpose if you are running it only for one play one time it is good that you can add an html uh, response viewer and it will show you the response here but by default it should always be a text one because it will help you to debug it properly uh, it is also recommended that if you are adding more users say for example you are adding more than thousands or thousand or 500 or 200 users it completely depends on the on your machine uh, how your uh, base machine is strong if your base machine is strong enough it will generate more load um, if it is not strong what you can do is you can create the base machine the strongest machine as your master and then uh, subsequently in the same network you can set different machines as your um, as as your slaves and on the basis of that we can actually create a distributed testing um, i successfully connected at least um, at least six to seven pcs and all those pcs were like 4gb ram and uh, um, a good processor as well and i could uh, generate a load of at least uh, six thousand to seven thousand users uh, with the with with my basic infrastructure with, with the basic infrastructure that i have and uh, apparently if i had to uh, generate a similar load on any other tool it would have been very cost, uh, you know, costly. So, so that is the session for today. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'll just go quickly through the uh, course material again because uh, if you have any questions, of course, please put them in a comment section. I'll try to address them. Um, So this is this was Apache Jupyter. Um, this was the second demo day. Um, you can so so as Kumar told yesterday, uh, what you can do is you can uh, take a little time to take your decision how you want to do this particular session when you want to start it and everything. And uh, so we are starting this as soon as possible. Um, then it will cover basic uh, the performance testing. I'll try to wind up this particular section as soon as possible because I don't want to kill your time by uh, telling you uh, blah blah the, after that uh, there will be concept uh, core concepts which which will tell you about architecture and everything uh, now why this is important because what I'll do is I'll try to uh, take some example of a cloud based application and um, as I have worked on a cloud based application we have migrated a in premise application to a cloud based application and then how um, it affected the architecture of um, architecture of the application. Uh, this is um, architecture of client server. 
client server app, uh, architecture we have did it yesterday i showed you one six step um, diagram which was telling you how the request goes to the server and then you then it comes back as a response then um, we have web application and concept of different tiers so three tier application four tier application and even in a cloud based application as I, as I was telling you earlier then uh, workload modeling that will have g meter introduction which we have already covered it in almost uh, twice now i have given you a small introduction in place meter will do uh, a practical session on this the thread group we understood at least two three components of this uh, a sampler right std the sampler registered request then the controller okay I, we did not take any controller we'll take that in the real session that pre processor post processor that timer uh, correlation configuration element listeners okay listener we have seen view result table today we have seen view results yesterday so there are uh, some more which will take in the real classes um, there are functions which we are adding that there are scenarios then there is um, GUI test, how you can execute that. Okay. Yeah, so Tirupati, you are asking to share the session. I think uh, yesterday uh, you must have received a one, one session video. Well, uh, of course, we'll share that today also. Then uh, integration with JMeter, uh, sorry, Jenkin and then there will be some interview preparation um, there will be performance monitoring perform monitor but will the class start exactly um, you have to send that request to so Tirupati is asking when will the class start exactly and uh, you have to ask i mean uh, kumar will be the best person to answer it so it depends on uh, the registration i suppose okay uh, this there is a price change uh, here. It is not updated. It was 8,900 as 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 it was told to me. Apart from that, um, so I I do have a few of the scripts that are created for uh, distribution testing. Of course, that that will be that will do. Okay, we'll we'll try to do that with uh, the virtual machines that are set and we'll try to understand a lot many things okay one more thing i will uh, try to add in this particular session so i do have those uh, slides with me but I, I can't show you right now okay so so what what happened was uh, a few years back i did my uh, six sigma certification and in six sigma what you have to do is you have to understand a lot um, so, so they train you with a pattern pattern recognition. So pattern recognition is uh, you can see the graphs, right? Um, let's let's take an example here. I'll, I'll quickly not take more than like two minutes or so. So I'm adding a listener that is called as response time graph. Okay. Now I added a response time graph. And then what I'm doing is I'm just running it once. So there are only 10 users which I actually did and added that to our test. Let's see if we have some response type graph here. Okay, as we don't have much data here, let me do one small thing. Delete this request. So went to the side, added dogs. Let me remove a GF. Okay, and then we what we did was we logged in. Login. This was checkout. Okay, so we renamed this things and then this was add dog. 
dog detail view right dog detail view i'm just uh, for for your understanding i'm just editing the script so that we could make the graph better do i need the steps yes this is update card now you can see that i can i can understand from um, the the parameters which are here what exactly the step is about product details and this is the last step okay and there is a new order form new order okay so this was our steps let me clear that and i'll go in thread group i'll add 100 users and i'll run this so you can see there are 100 users which are being hit so 100 users are hitting the server and our thread group says that it is continuously hitting and there is no wrap up time i have given or anything okay i'll i'll explain you that later So it is saying that there is no enough data to generate the graph. Don't know why. Correct. Okay. So what will happen is now this is the response time graph. Response time graph is giving me a response time from here. But uh, this is a very small script. There are very uh, weird kind of examples once you will have a real life test i'll show you those um, response time graph it is very tricky to understand how is the response actually happening and there are some patterns uh, by which you can understand that how this um, this this graphs could be understood how you can predict what to understand from the graph what data is important what data are outliners I'll try to explain that, uh, that in a particular session when we'll understand how to read the graphs and uh, we'll try to cover that in the listener and the response uh, time. Wala. Okay. Okay. So that's it from my side. If you have any questions, please go ahead. Please let me know. Kumar, please share your number. Um, Tirupati, you must have received that in the email um, from where you got this link of, uh, you know, uh, so you can get that from there. And okay, is there any certification for JMeter? Um, so Darshan, there is, is no certification as such. There is a, there, there is there are no there are no official websites which are actually giving it. Uh, there are companies like uh, there are some some training companies who are giving JMeter, but there is no official uh, JMeter certification as such um, given by anyone. I'm not sure if if uh, that is being given by this. The completion certification, of course, that will be provided. I suppose I'm I'm not sure about it. But there is no uh, you know authentic or any any committee that is actually taking care because what is happening is. And ISTQB is done by a quality board that is created in India, and the full coach uh, is uh, the president of it, right? Uh, forward the mail to my ID. Okay, I'll ask uh, Tirupati, I'll ask to uh, ask Kumar to send you uh, the email address, okay? Uh, so I was telling that there is no particular board for Apache JMeter as such. As far as I know, there is no certification for JMeter. Uh, uh, but of course there are there are some companies who, who give you certification but rather than going for a certification i really suggest sudarshan um, that you should be going more for the knowledge and insight about the about the application once you will do some projects you will it you will rock yourself you don't have to prove yourself with a certification you just have to um, give a better solution to the uh, to your uh, clients that is the best thing that you can do okay 
and that is what i did because uh, five to six years back even i was very new to jmeter i was not knowing anything so there was uh, one of the colleague who just told me how to record and playback and then uh, i kept on exploring it myself and once uh, once i once there was a situation that i was stuck i uh, we then you google it then you try and um, understand the things that you take help from people you understand you talk to many people so that is how you understand i mean um, a certification won't won't do that a certification will only give you proof that you understand you have a technical knowledge of it okay so that is the course content and uh, we want to start it as soon as possible it will be a 20 days session um i'll i'll try to keep uh, I'll, I'll give you the uh, whatsoever what what we will uh, you know whatsoever topic will be covered i'll give you an advanced um material to you okay after this course can we be able to face interview of course uh, jenny uh, of after this course you will be perfectly able to do the interview so as the course content um, helps you to get preparation on your interview question i'll try to help you out with uh, how you can present that in your resume and how you can um, you know so so i being i i also have some experience on uh, working with hr roles and uh, recruitment roles so i'll try to help you with that i'll give you some resources that will of course will help you to uh, face interviews on gmeter directly okay okay so we are almost done and uh, i really thank you all for your time for taking out time early in the morning and joining me here and i really hope to work with you all guys i will keep a very dynamic sessions when we start this batch and uh, i'll try to keep uh, we will get more and more um, you know interaction and we'll do some more and more practical sessions so that you will have one hands on experience rather than just uh, joining some course and understanding you know i won't be giving you notes and anything i'll give you presentations earlier and then giving you a task and on the basis of the task we'll try to learn more and more okay so thank you so much for your time i really appreciate and i hope to see you soon uh, let me know yes thanks to darshan thanks tirupati thank you and sure thing Bye bye take care Bye